What's up, everybody? It is Tuesday, and uh, another work day. I'm going to work today. Um, woke up, just woke up, and I saw this video uh, that someone had posted up on Facebook. It's a video of a bunch of kids in uh, f in uh, army fatigue shirts in the church dancing to Jay Z, um, and it's uh, very explicit. The, the The lyrics are very explicit. Um, dancing to Jay Z in the sanctuary in the church. Dancing in the church, a lot of people don't have a problem with that, but we're going to take a look at what, what the Bible says about that, what the Bible says about the sanctuary and how we should treat uh, the sanctuary and how we should act in the sanctuary. I mean, if you if you guys want to show off your talents maybe outside of the church, you know, dancing and stuff outside of the church or outside of the sanctuary, maybe that's okay. But there are some things that you just don't do in the sanctuary in the church. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but right now I'm going to go eat with my daughter and we're, and then I'm going to go to work. And we are going to talk about this because this is a serious, some serious stuff going on here. So... So is dancing and drums in the sanctuary, is that allowed? Now remember, you can you can find um, verses in the Bible where it does give us instructions on how to worship God with music. First Chronicles 25, Second Chronicles 29, I think those there are some, um, some verses there where it tells us how to conduct our music in the sanctuary. And it gives us instructions on how to worship God with music. The drums are never mentioned as a uh, an instrument to that we can use to worship God in the sanctuary. When it when it's talking about in the sanctuary, it's always like harps or flutes or timbrels, you know those those little percussion um, whatever it's called. But drums, like I'm, I'm talking about, like drums, like trap sets that um, are used by rock and roll bands or Hip hop artists, you know the the snares and the and the kicks, the kicks and the snare. Remember, a snare is a trap. I think it's Psalms 192 verse 110. It says that the wicked uses a trap to lure people to sin, because that was what happened to David. The wicked one was trying to lure David into a trap, and those drums that they use for a uh, what do you call those rock and roll bands one of those drums in that set it's called a snare a trap they call it a trap set the reason why they call it a trap set is because those drums will trap you in a trance and then you start dancing and you know and and you start doing all kinds of things in the in the sanctuary that you're not supposed to do dancing in the sanctuary you're not supposed to do that now there are verses in psalms where it says praise praise God with dancing praise God in the sanctuary praise God with with music but it never says praise God with dancing in the sanctuary now you guys got to remember if you guys study the sanctuary and and how the sanctuary service is supposed to be if your clothes are dirty and you enter into the sanctuary you die that's how serious it is you know why because God's presence is in that sanctuary the Shekinah glory which represents God is in that sanctuary. If you guys remember what um, God told Moses on Mount on that on the mountain, He said, "Take your sandals off because you are standing on holy ground." The reason why the the ground was holy was because God was present. That's the reason why Moses was standing on holy ground. It's God's presence that make that ground holy. Same thing happened to Joshua. Remember when Joshua met with the captain of the Lord, and the captain of the Lord said. Take off your shoes, take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. Same thing. It was God's presence that made that ground holy. So in the sanctuary, we have we have we now have a representation of God, of God's presence, which is the, the Shekinah glory. It's the Shekinah glory that make the holy of holies, the most holy place, holy. It's his presence. And remember, when we come to God's presence, there is no, it's supposed to be reverent. Because if it's not reverent, guess what? You die. So when we are in the sanctuary, in the holy place, or in the most holy place, when we are in the sanctuary, we should we should be reverent. We shouldn't be doing these things, these dances and these uh, this this music with cursing in it and uh, hip hop music and all kinds of things with the drums and all that stuff. 
these things are you don't do if you want if you want to deeply respect God or if you want to deep show your deep reverence to God these things are you shouldn't be doing these things because back then it's a it was a serious thing but it's still a serious thing now but back then the consequences was immediate now it's not but back then the consequences was immediate you can even enter the sanctuary without cleaning yourself because if you didn't clean yourself when you and you entered the sanctuary you would die that's how serious it was and that's how serious the consequences were so when we enter the, the, the sanctuary, which is a place of worship, we should deeply respect it because God is in there. God is present in that sanctuary. About to be at the studio, about to pay a friend a uh, visit, uh, my baptism brother, with some food. Like, does that count as proof? If the actual workers know that they messed up. How is that mushroom burger? It's pretty good. <laughs> So if you guys remember in Exodus 32, you guys can check this up. You guys can look in the Bible um, for these for this chapter. If you guys look up Exodus 32, you're going to find Moses up in a mountain talking to God. And then he heard something. Or no, it, it wasn't Moses that heard it. It was Joshua that heard it. Because jo Joshua was with Moses. And here's what it said. Exodus 32 and verse 17, starting from verse 17. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp a noise of war in the camp and then here's what Moses said Moses said it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome but the noise of them that sing do I hear Moses hears music back in the day um, when the pagans would go to war they would sound the drum they would beat on the drums they, they, they were called war drums pagans also used drums to worship their false gods they use drums and music as a cue to worship their false gods. Verse 19, And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, this is Moses, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of, out of his hands and break them beneath the mountain. So here is the people of God practicing pagan paganism, pretty much. Because they are beating on the drums, singing and and by that cue, worshipping the golden calf. False worship at the cue of secular music. False worship at the cue of pagan music. Keep that in mind. Go to Daniel 3. In Daniel 3, you guys can look this up. In Daniel 3, King Nebuchadnezzar raised up a statue, a golden statue. And what he wanted to do, specifically in verse 10, what he wanted to do is that all of Babylon should worship the statue at the sound of the music. So it is the sound of secular music or pagan music. It's the sound of that secular music that is the cue for false worship. Cue for false worship. Same thing. Bow down to this false idol. Bow down to this idol at the sound of this music. So over and over again, the devil uses music as a cue for false 
worship. Where do you worship? Well, you worship everywhere, but as a convocation or as a, as a congregation, I mean, you worship in the sanctuary. So if you replace worship, true worship music with secular music as a cue to worship, what are you really doing? You're cueing people to worship falsely because you shouldn't have the secular music in the sanctuary in the first place. It is false worship. Now, there's nothing wrong with percussions or drums or whatever and timpanies and, and timbrels and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the sanctuary, not acceptable. Kicks and snares in the sanctuary? No. The sanctuary is supposed to be reverence. You're supposed to be reverent in the sanctuary. And the devil is going to use over and over again, over and over. You, you see it in history. You see it in, 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 in the Bible. The devil uses secular or pagan music as a cue for false worship. So those, I don't want to say this, but if, if, if you're in a sanctuary and there is a drum set, you better watch out. You better watch out, okay? So, just a little nugget of knowledge for you guys. Um, if you guys want me to expand more and do more Bible study, I'll, I'll do an actual Bible study video and not not a vlog. Because this these vlogs, I can only do so much with these vlogs. So, if you guys want me to expand more on this or talk more about this, I will do so in a Bible study uh, video, an actual Bible study video. And I will go deep on this because this is, it's very, it's deep. It's really deep. This subject is deep. You can do like three, four hours, five hours of study on this and you, you'll find out a lot of things. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this video, if you guys were blessed by this video, please like and share. Share with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your relatives, anybody whom you know who uses drums in the sanctuary. Anybody whom you know would be blessed by this video. And if you guys are new to this channel and want more Christian content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. And if you guys want to support this uh, Bible study video ministry and keep this video ministry afloat, make sure you guys pray for this video ministry. We would surely appreciate it. And donate at schoolforprofits.tv. Thank you guys again. Praise God always. I'll see you guys tomorrow.